All right, so here we go with another awesome edition of the Shut Up Show. We are so blessed, Bernie, that we get all these awesome people. Today we get to learn about 10 bucks in a laptop with our good buddy, Mr. Greg Hartle. Greg, thank you for being on our show, brother. Hey, thanks for having me. This is pretty cool. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to shut up or am I supposed to talk. <laughs> we'll tell you when to shut up, okay? Just okay. stay tuned. Bernie's really good at that. Usually I'll over talk. And then we'll have a guest that sometimes interrupts. That works out <laughs> really good. Perfect. So, <laughs> just kidding. So, Greg, so 10 bucks in a laptop, dude. I know Bernie is going to introduce you, but I just want to say, man, I love your story. We're going to talk about it today. But Bernie is going to tee this up the right way because she's got some cool stuff that she has been saving, saving for this conversation. <laughs> so, Bernie Shung, over to you, dear. You know, Phil, this is going to be the first time I reveal on this show that I'm a stalker. <laughs> and I think that's why I make such amazing intros. And Greg, we just had AJ Leon on our show earlier today. And he's like, holy cow, Bernie. He's like, that was awesome. And I didn't reveal to him. It's because I stalk people like AJ and people like you, Greg. But um, I'm, I'm going to kind of give you a really warm introduction before we, we really dive into your story. Because some people know who you are and some, some don't. But I found out about you on Kitchen Table Companies. G, <laughs> go figure, right, Phil? Uh, back in August of 2011, and since then, I've been following your journey. I've been following, you know, your blog. I've been following all the work that you do, and the main reason why, because you just seriously like showed me to, you know. Uh, Despite all the freaking fear and self-doubt, just go. Just go and do mm -hmm. what you want to do in your life, make an impact. And the one story that really comes to mind the most that I often think about in my own life is when you talked about how you had just left on your journey. You just left. And again, your story is you had 10 bucks in your pocket your laptop and it was recreating and reinventing your life with just that getting rid of all the resources you knew before and one of the first events that happened in your life was oh shit I have ten dollars in my pocket I'm gonna go broke what should I do with this money and what you did and then I'm gonna go in and you know turn it on over to you is is instead of allowing yourself to to hoard that money and harbor that fear anymore you got rid of the crutch and you decided, I have, I'll have no money after I get rid of this $10, so what am I going to do with it? Oh, I'll do the obvious thing. I'm going to go give it away to homeless people and buy them socks. <laughs> I'm buy them clean socks, <laughs> right? And, and what I love the most about that story is this just happened to me two days ago, and this happens to me very often, especially since entrepreneurs tend to have this feast or famine kind of, of uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And when I'm always at my you know pennies left in the bank, Here's what I do, and I don't know if you know this, but I'm telling you now for the first time. I have a Greg Harrell moment, and I say to myself, mm -hmm. you may not be able to pay that bill in three days, but Bernie, don't allow the money that you have in your bank to be a crutch. This is especially the time that you need to go give your money away, serve, and help somebody else. And every single time I have that Greg Hartle moment and I actually do that, <laughs> the money comes back, I'm not even kidding, within like 24 to 48 hours. So first of all, thank you so much for showing me so much bravery through not only your words, but especially through your actions. You make a difference. You've changed my life. I love you to death, Hartle. You are an amazing force to be reckoned with, and that is why we handpicked you for this show. So what do you say, have to say about that, Greg? I, I feel like this is a perfect moment for me to just shut up. Like, that was, that was well said. I like it. Thank you, Shang. That's uh, I call you Shang, by the way. For those who don't know, I always refer to Bernie as Shang. Um, no, I, you know, I believe there's a few kind of universal truths. Number one, you are not defined by your circumstances, um, and despite whatever your circumstances are, I believe that your personal resourcefulness will always be greater than whatever amount of resources you have or have access to. And resources are fantastic, and they're great, and they're necessary as you make progress. But it's your personal resourcefulness that's going to matter most when you need to dig deep, especially as entrepreneurs. I mean, when you first start out as an entrepreneur, it's all about digging deep. You know, it's all about how creative can you get. It's all about how much courage do you have. It's all about what ideas can you implement. Um, you know, because a lot of times, you know, we're bootstrapping. We don't have a lot of cash. We don't have a lot of resources. We don't have a lot of connections. We don't know a lot of people. Um, and we do what we can with the resources we have. But before you can become resourceful, as you talked about, 
it, for me anyway, I, I think a lot of it comes down to remembering what I'm capable of. And sometimes that's hard to see in the moment. You know, sometimes it's very difficult, like you described. You know, when I started my project, ten dollars and the laptop. Look, I've made plenty of money in my lifetime. Uh, you know, to stand there on the corner with only a ten dollar bill and to hold on to that ten dollars as if it's the only money I'm ever going to make again, is is basically creating the scarcity that I don't want to have in my life. Uh, so for me, it's important that when I catch myself doing that, which I still do and always will do, I think it's just human tendency and human nature, that when your resources are scarce, the first thing most people do is, is they become scarce. They, they start to have that scarcity mentality and they start to protect what they have. And I think to a certain degree that's important and also I think it's natural um, to protect what you have. But I know that you can go no further than that which you're attached to. So whatever it is that you're protecting, whatever it is that you're holding on tight to, that's as far as you'll go. You know, and in a lot of cases you have to begin to let go. And sometimes that's relationships and sometimes that's uh, you know, stuff that you have. Sometimes that's money. Sometimes that's just belief system. Um, that you might have. And I know as an early stage entrepreneur in my life, you know, I, I started my first business when I was 22. And I know at the beginning it was very hard for me to let go of a lot of stuff and say, you know what, I can take this risk, I can go out and do this. And it still comes up as you talked about. I mean, $10 a laptop wasn't my first experiment, if you will. And I still had those feelings and I still had those thoughts. Our mutual friend Srini Rao um, calls you a lunatic, by the way. <laughs> for that's, a fair, that's a fair thing. <laughs> for obvious reasons, and, and followed by that, because uh, we had him on our show as well, followed by that, he made the quote, because this was inspired by you, the quote, constraints make you creative. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and what I thought about was that sock story. So mm -hmm. um, can you help us expand on that, that quote a little bit? Because I'm sure you, you epitomize it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, how does it go like, you know, necessity, you know, breeds invention, you know, and I think you're seeing that, or innovation, and you're seeing that right now in our country uh, as we had the economic collapse and a lot of people all of a sudden are, are having to find other ways to make ends meet, and a lot of times that's where their creativity is born, and, and that's always been inside of them, you know, it's inside of you, that's inside of you, Phil, that's inside of me, uh, but a lot of times when we're comfortable, we don't express that. When we're comfortable, we don't have those constraints around us to really start to get super creative about, about what we're doing. So in a lot of respects, in my life, I've actually purposely created some of those uh, constraints at times just to create that tension, that physical tension and that mental and emotional tension that I need to express myself. Um, you know, when we get lulled into living a very comfortable life, we, we lose that. We lose that sense of personal creativity and that, and that enthusiasm and a lot of times we lose that passion that we have for certain things and it becomes difficult to express it. Um, so, you know, one of the things I do even just in my businesses is we try to, we try to play games where we create some of those constraints. So, uh, you know, we have, it, it, take Academy on the Go for instance, one of our values is, is resourcefulness and we say, we always start with the question, how can we? And we keep going until we find a solution or we invent one. So what we'll do is we'll play games. We'll say, how can we make a connection with somebody that's really famous that no one, none of us know? And then we'll just keep playing that game until we figure out a way to make it happen. Or how can we generate a thousand bucks in the next six days, um, you know, not using any products that we currently have on the shelf? What would we do? And by playing those games, you unlock that creativity inside of yourself. And in the moment, if, I've found that when I play those games, it turns my business into something fun and interesting. And other team members, if they're involved, uh, you know, start to bring their creativity to the table. And, and for me, that's always been a huge help in me unleashing a lot of new creativity and a lot of great innovation and a lot of great ideas that I end up having. So, Greg, are you telling people to quit their job and just have lots of constraints? Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, I don't know, man. Yeah. No, that's a, it's a, that's a good point, Phil, and I and I recognize the uh, sarcasm because that's usually how I am. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, definitely not. You know, I think that there. First of all, one of the big things that you know, when entrepreneurs come to me, I've worked as part of ten dollars in a laptop. I've helped five hundred and two aspiring entrepreneurs launch their business idea, and you know, that's a lot of people. That's it's over five hundred people is a lot of people to work with. And I see some common consistencies, and, and one of them is, is that you have to really understand yourself. You have to know yourself. 
So somebody like me that can stand on a corner with only $10 in my laptop, not have a bank account, not have a car, not have a credit card, not have anything available to me, I knew, you know, there, there's a part of me that's taking a leap there. I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea where I'm going to go, how I'm going to make money, where I'm going to sleep. But there's also a, a bigger part of me that understands who I am and understands that this is a challenge that I'm willing to accept and I'm willing to take on. And I think that as an entrepreneur, that's the first question. How well do you know yourself? Because some people, they, they need more of a security blanket. Some people have other responsibilities, you know, and they need to make sure they protect those responsibilities. And some people can just kind of, you know, jump off the cliff and build the wings on the way down. But you have to know yourself first. I, think, I don't think there's a right answer there. I think that comes down to you as an individual. I think if you're the type of person, though, that continuously finds an excuse for getting started or continuously has to get the next thing, you know, when I have this, then I'll do this, when you start playing that game, you run the risk of just finding yourself in a, in a nice little comfort zone that you never get out of. So in that case, if you keep playing the game over and over, when I have this or if I have this, then I'll do this, that's when you have to start putting some constraints on yourself and start, and start creating that tension uh, purposefully uh, to, to get you out of your comfort zone and get you moving forward. Yeah. That reminds – oh, sorry, Phil. No, that's okay. I just want one quick follow-up there, Bernie, um, and, and that was – um, I, I, my, my point was, of course, that was sarcastic, but what I meant was a lot of times people think entrepreneurs are always encouraging people to go, 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 go. Yeah. And that's, and, and I, I just want to make that clear. I mean, AJ said the same thing this morning. We say the same thing. Everybody says that you don't have to jump off the darn cliff to be an entrepreneur. You don't Not at all. Be Greg Hartle to be, to, to take a risk. Right. Right, and so, you know, when you look, the, the way I like, you guys had Trini on, and Trini talks a lot about the difference between modeling and mimicking, and what we tend to do is we tend to find people and we tend to mimic them. So we say, oh, Greg can start with $10, so can I. Or, you know, Greg launched a business with no money, so can I. Or, you know, we look at Phil or we look at anybody, right? But what we really should be doing is we, we shouldn't be mimicking. We shouldn't say, so can I, per se. What we should say is, what traits do they embody that I also want to embody? So things like courage or things like faith or things like creativity or things like being vulnerable or authentic, you know, having some authenticity, whatever it might be. So I, I look for traits in other people that I want to also embody. I don't necessarily look for actions that I want to mimic. So that might provide some clarification there. Yeah, and th it's like you watched our last show. Okay, because Bernie and I, seriously, we just got done talking about comparison and about trying to be like other people and about how it is about finding those traits, not about doing exactly that. So that, that's fantastic. Sorry, I had to go there. So, Bernie, you go. No, that's really cool. That's even more perfect because what I was going to say is, and now it, it really is going to latch along to this conversation, is the, the, the traits that Greg has embodied, for me personally, and I know many of the people who are our mutual friends who also follow his journey is the whole I don't want I don't like calling the word ability but 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 Greg's bravery to defy the odds um, many people don't know that Greg lives with a kidney transplant okay my mom also is has a kidney transplant from I think close to eight nine years ago um, doctors tell you your life's never gonna be the same again doctors put like this this uh, timeline on how much how much time you have left um, after the transplant and and John Hayden was just on our show of inbound zombie and he was talking about how his mom when he was a kid uh, had a brain aneurysm and doctors told her she would never have the same functionality and she said fuck you doctors I'm you know I'm moving forward and and Greg I see that in you so kind of take us through that I mean we've had this conversation here about embodying these traits of people that we want to emulate after or model after um, it's got to be hard as hell, but how do you find the courage to embody that with a freaking kidney transplant among all of the other, you know, crazy things that, like Serena said, you're a lunatic to, to <laughs> defy the odds? Well, you know, I, I think a, a couple of things. I, I think one is, you know, as an entrepreneur or anyone that wants to do creative work, you cannot play the game of odds, you know, first of all. Um, and I take that maybe to an extreme because I'm just kind of an extreme person. So I do that personally. You know, for instance, when I first had my kidney transplant, I, 
I was told I would take about 53 pills a day for the rest of my life. I take exactly zero pills a day every day right now. Um, and because I just didn't accept those as, as the rules. And, and that's what entrepreneurs do. You know, they don't accept, you know, and AJ says this very well. He talks about the idea that you don't have to choose from the options that are available to you on the table. You can create your own option. And that's what entrepreneurs embody. You know, they create their own option. And, and that's what I try to embody in myself. So, I mean, you talk about, like, what are some of the things that I do? Number one, I always find sources of inspiration, you know. I mean, I, I, I think it was Jim Rohn who had the quote, you know, that, uh, you know, something along the lines that, that motivation fades and that's why you need it every day. You know, it, it's, you have to keep motivating yourself. You have to keep finding ways to inspire yourself. And sometimes that comes in the form of challenges. Sometimes that comes in the form of reading something, watching something, shows like this. Um, you know, obviously you can take that too far and not take action. If all you're doing is watching shows like this all day long, then that's different. But if you do this as a, as a glimpse into someone else's life and a source of inspiration for you or encouragement for you, then in a lot of ways stuff like that will work for you. That's what works for me. That's one thing. And another thing is, is, is just not accepting what's on the table as my only options and saying maybe there's another option and maybe I can create it and maybe I can explore it and then surrounding yourself with good people. I mean, I, you know, I could never underestimate the, the, the value of the people that I have around me. Um, in, in some respects, you know, it, I, I don't look for yes people and I don't look for no people. You know, if everyone says yes or everyone agrees with everything I do or if everyone says no or disagrees with everything I do, I try to stay away from both of those people. What I try to look for is that healthy balance of people that will say, Greg, you're crazy, don't do that. But also, you know, will encourage me to do other things. Or some people will say, yeah, you're crazy, definitely do that. Um, you know, so I kind of look for that, that right mix of people that really, really know me, care about me, and that will tell me like it is. They won't tell me what they think I want to hear, and they won't always tell me that I can't do it because they can't do it. They'll, they'll really give it to me straight, and I cannot stress enough that ha surrounding yourself with good people is, I mean, that's, that's my life right there in a nutshell. Oh, Hartle, I'm so glad I have you in my circle. <laughs> I love you to death, seriously. Um, Phil, I could just go on and on. You know me. So what do you have for our buddy? Yeah, well, I, I think bringing some of those lessons in, right, for surrounding yourself with the right mix of people, I think was a really good lesson for all of us, Greg, reminding that uh, it's not yes, it's not no, it's straight, which I think is a big, big thing that we need to remember because often uh, we get a lot of sunshine blowers or we get a lot of naysayers, mm -hmm. and the answer is we need a combination of people in our lives to give us a balanced perspective and to maybe look at the, the other sides of the elephant that we can't see right now because it's right in front of us. And then... I, let me add something to that, Phil, if you don't mind. Um, especially with your business idea or your product or your service offering, you know, if we're talking specific to entrepreneurs, um, you need that. You need really sharp people to look you in the eye and say, this is junk or to look you in the eye and say this is not going to work or to look you in the eye and say you're undercharging for this this is worth a lot more and you just don't have the courage to charge more you need people to be able to do that for you because if you try to play this game on an island you're not going to succeed if you think you're, you're, you have your little baby and your little idea and, and it means everything to you and you're almost afraid to show it to people because you're afraid they're going to tell you the truth about it, maybe it's not so cute after all, maybe it's kind of an ugly baby, you need those people. And, but you need the flip side too. Uh, but more importantly, you just need people to be honest with you. And you need good people to be honest with you. I think a lot of times what happens with... Uh, uh, Good is probably not a, an appropriate word there. What, what I mean is you, you need experienced people um, that, that have talent and skill um, and, and experience to give you feedback. Because what happens sometimes is, is that you come up with a good business idea and you go tell your neighbor or you go tell, you go tell your uncle and they go, oh, that's garbage. But they've never actually started a business or run a business or done anything in business or you know, sold a company or anything of the sort. So you got to make sure that the advice you're getting back is actually from people who, who have experience with that. You know, I try to, to get very specific advice from very specific people as often as possible. So if I have a product, I go to somebody who has developed a product and I ask them, you've developed products, what do you think of this product? And they can usually give me a very good answer. If I have a service, 
Then I go to people that have sold a service and I say, you sell a service. Am I pricing this right? You know, go, go ask a specific question to a specific person instead of just kind of vague questions to vague people because you'll get much better feedback and, and you'll find that those feedback mechanisms will help you shape your product, your service, your business, your brand much better. Yeah, that's great advice. So, so one thing we forgot to ask here, and then we'll move towards wrap up here, Greg, is what are you afraid of, man? What, what are some of the things that you've overcome that have, you know, that have been there? Because, I mean, you, dude, you are awesome, and you do some stuff that, that is beyond, honestly, where many people will ever be. But, well, but you've got to have some fear, right? So what is oh, it? You know, I have, I have fear every day. I mean, you know, we'll start with the basic fear that I have a very strong fear, and I'm being dead serious about this, of going up escalators. And yesterday I found myself in the Indianapolis Public uh, Library, and it has seven levels of escalators. And as I'm going up each level, I'm playing that game, you know, where I almost get on and then I get off, you know, and I don't get on, then I almost get on, and then I almost, I'm not joking. It scares the crap out of me. So we'll start there. But more specifically to your question, um, I have fears every day. You know, I'm traveling around the country with the goal of getting to all 50 states, and I have to find places to sleep. I have to find new people to meet. I'm not a social person um, by nature. I'm, a, I'm very much an introvert, and I'm very much a quiet, calm relaxed person for the most part. And so to have conversations with strangers scares the crap out of me. But I just keep doing it because it's required to do it in order to succeed. And secondly, it just keeps forcing me to get better at it. And the better you get at things, you know, the less you become, the less you're afraid of those. So that, that's one thing. The second thing, you know what, what really scares me? I'm, I'm really afraid of reaching the end of my life and, and, and looking back and saying, boy, I didn't make a strong enough contribution. Like that, I, I'm, I'm very good at, at accomplishing things and achieving things, but accomplishments and achievements have a beginning and an end, and a contribution is enduring. So whether you're there or not, the contribution keeps going. And, you know, and so, for some people, it's their children. You know, it's, in some respects, it, it might be a charitable organization. It might be a product. You know, Steve Jobs certainly has made several contributions to this world. And I just get so nervous and so scared that maybe I'm not going to make the contribution I think I'm capable of making. And really, that's what fuels me every day. I wake up thinking, how can I put my fingerprints on the blueprint for tomorrow so that if I'm not here, because I was faced, I was literally told by doctors, you have three months to live, this is it. And I did a death tour. I went around and told people, I'm dying, you know, I only have a few months left to live, so let's kind of share some time together. And I was fortunate that I got a kidney transplant and didn't have to experience that. So I know very well the one thing that scares me most, because I had to face this when I was 25 years old, was am I going to die and not have made a significant contribution? And to me, the best way I know how to make a contribution is through being an entrepreneur. Because through that, I develop products, I develop services, I develop brands that continue on without me. And that's what I love about being an entrepreneur most. Wow. I love it. And, I, and, I, and again, I want to bring it back full circle to my story. I told you about the whole mantra of every time I'm afraid that I'm going to run out of money in my bank, I think of Greg Hartle. And I think of the clean socks for homeless people. I know it sounds funny, but that mantra is going to stay with me for the rest of my life. And in fact, I embody that. And it, it works every freaking time. <laughs> and I'm sure you understand that. I'm sure that's happened to you quite a bit as well. Yeah. So, so that story lives on uh, even beyond your and my lifetime. Yeah, so, it's a contribution for sure. Absolutely. So thank you for that. So Phil, should we uh, have Greg tell us what exciting, awesome stuff he's working on yeah, right now? Absolutely. So Greg, in, in wrapping this sucker up, and we do have one viewer, so we just want to say, hey, what's up, awesome. viewer? So Greg, tell us how we can find you and the awesome stuff you're working on, because this is not about us. This is a show about you and about finding resources to help the people that tune in and that are going to watch this either live, one person, or more people as we share this out. Yeah, well, the easiest way to reach me is through greghartle.com. That's H-A-R-T-L-E.com. Greghartle.com kind of has all my info on it. Uh, but obviously, I'm doing the $10 in a laptop project. My goal is to get to all 50 states by the end of this year. Part of that goal was to launch my own business, which I have called academyonthego.com. I co-founded an online learning platform. Based, we like to affectionately refer to it as the busy person's solution to continual improvement. 
So if there's any sort of life skills that you want to develop, you know, get better at managing your money, productivity, networking, building a network, you know, those sorts of things. We have lots of courses and lessons and skill paths um, on our academy at academyonthego.com. Uh, and then I have $10 in the laptop. The other part of it was to work with 500 entrepreneurs, and I've now worked with 502, so 502. So I'm going to just keep going until I get to all 50 states. So you know, feel free to get in touch with me. Anybody, feel free to send me an email. If there's anything I can do to help you, put you in the right direction, give you some guidance, anything, do not hesitate to send me an email, please. And thanks and for having this, me. This has been fun. Yeah, and this is why we love you, Greg. You're awesome, man. I met you at Sobcon, then you came up. We yeah. had some burgers at Bombers. And uh, so appreciate your free free sharing and your and your being naked with us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now off with the shirt. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I left, I'll leave my shirt on this time just because we have one viewer. That's okay. right. Okay. We love you, Hartle. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today, bud. Thanks for having me. This has been my pleasure.